Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. Who is coming here from Nagoya Institute of Technology, where he's doing his PhD. He was recently spending a year as an intern at IBM Watson, and he's going to be talking today about the work he's been doing with Professor Takuda on using HMMs for trajectory models by combining static and dynamic, dynamic information, extending some of the work that he had done on speech synthesis that he came to give a talk on probably a couple of years ago. But now they are trying to use this for speech recognition. So again. Mr. Sen. Okay. And thank you very much for coming. Uh, my name is Heiga Zen. I'm a PhD student in Nagoya Institute of, Institute of Technology, Japan. Uh, and today, I'd like to talk about the trajectory model derived from the hidden mark model by imposing explicit relationship between static and dynamic features. Oops. Uh, this presentation is organized as follows. First, I'd like to talk about our research background and introduction. Then, then I'll derive the trajectory model from hidden Markov model. After that, I'll talk about the relationship between HM-based speech synthesis and uh, derived trajectory model. It is followed by the uh, training algorithm, uh, Viterbi type training algorithm for this model. And then the discussion uh, the relationship between other techniques such as extended maximum likelihood linear transformation and the product of Gaussians. This model is uh, evaluated both in speech recognition and synthesis. And finally, I'll talk about the conclusion and the future works. Okay. The speech recognition technology has achieved significant progress with the introduction of a hidden mark model. However, you know, there are a lot of limitations of hidden mark model. For example, piecewise constant statistics within the HMM state, conditional independence assumption of the state output probabilities, and weak duration modeling. To overcome these problems, a lot of alternative models have been proposed. Uh, most of them have, been, have attempted to capture the speech dynamics. However, the, usually they require additional parameters and the computational cost. Alternatively, the use of dynamic features are very common. Uh, it augmenting feature vectors by adding their time derivatives. It enhances the speech recognition performance drastically. However, it is a simple method to capture. Uh, this is a simple method to capture time dependencies. However, it is an ad hoc, not an essential solution, because it allows inconsistent statistics between static and dynamic features when it is used as a generative model. If we sample the observation vector sequence from the hidden Markov model with static and dynamic features. The, it, the derived uh, obtained samples are ignoring the, the static and the dynamic feature constraints are ignored. Okay, the output probability of observation vector sequence O from a standard HMM lambda is given by this equation. We are uh, Q is a Gaussian component sequence, and QT is a Gaussian component at time t. So, uh, the probability of observation vector sequence O from according to Gaussian component sequence Q is given by a large dimensional the Gaussian distribution whose Gaussian dim Gaussian, whose dimensionality is kT. The, its mean vector is mu q, and its 
uh, covariance matrix is sigma q, where mu q and sigma q is given by concatenating mean vectors and the covariance matrix according to Gaussian component sequence q. Usually, the observation vector OT is composed of static feature vector CT and the dynamic feature and the, the acceleration features. Usually, the dynamic features are calculated as regression coefficients from its neighboring static features. In this example, the delta CT is computed from CT minus 1 and CT plus 1 using this equation. Therefore, there is a therefore, uh, relationship between static feature vector sequence C and observation vector sequence O can be represented in a matrix form as O equal WC, where W is a window matrix which projects the static feature vector sequence C to observation vector sequence O. So there is a deterministic relationship between static feature vector sequence C and observation vector sequence O. This relationship is not stochastic, it's a deterministic. So this model, so out of a probability of observation vector sequence O from lambda according to Q is given by this equation. And observation vector is composed of static and dynamic features. However, this model is improper in the sense of statistical modeling because originally observed feature is static feature vector sequence C rather than observation vector sequence O. So, and it allows inconsistent statistics between static and dynamic features when it is used as a generative model. So, to avoid this problem, we should normalize the, this model by using the normalization, normalize, should be normalized to yield valid PDF. So, this is a normalization constant to obtain a valid PDF where PQ and RQ is given by these equations. So normalized Gaussian is still Gaussian distribution, but the dimensionality is different. So the Gaussian distribution in augmented space is uh, 3MT dimensional has 3 empty dimensionality, but the normalized Gaussian distribution has the MT dimensionality, where M is a uh, dimensionality of static feature, and T is a length of uh, observation. And the probability is defined by this Gaussian distribution whose mean vector is over line CQ and its uh, covariance matrix is PQ. The, we can, uh, above. interestingly, the covariance matrix of this model becomes full covariance. So we can avoid the conditional independence assumption uh, in this model. And the result, we may define a new statistical model by using that the, the normalized, uh, normalized Gaussian distribution. In this presentation, this model is referred as trajectory HMM. Uh, this model can, be avo can avoid the constant statistics problem because the mean vector of this mean vector is given as a smooth trajectory. And the covariance matrix is full, so we can model the dependency between frames. 
And this figure shows the example of mean vector and natural speech and covariance matrix. Uh, in this figure, the, the mean vector and the covariance matrix for first male capsulum is only uh, uh, drawn. Uh, this black one shows the natural speech, and this red one shows the mean trajectory. So you can find the and this shows the uh, phoneme boundary, and this shows the state boundary. So you can find the mean vector varies within the HMM state. And also, covariance matrix varies within the state. And interframe correlation, uh, this colors the show the size of variance. So the interframe correlation can be modeled in this by using this uh, interframe covariance matrix. And in this case, we use the context-independent model. So, however, the, its value is their value diff, uh, varies. Both mean and the covariance vary according to duration at the, its neighboring models. So it indicates that this model has the possibility to capture co-articulation effect naturally. And then I'd like to talk about the relationship between HM-based speech synthesis and derived trajectory model. So first, I'd like to uh, introduce our hidden Markov model based speech synthesis. The HMM is used a lot of places in speech synthesis. First, there to obtain a transcription and the segmentation and the construction of inventory of segment and the runtime selection. However, the they are, these are called the unit selection based speech synthesis. It can synthesize high-quality speech, but obtaining various voice qualities is very difficult. To obtain such voice qualities, we have to collect a lot of speech data. On the other hand, we have proposed the HMA-based speech synthesis. In this framework, the voice is generated from HMM themselves. So voice quality can be changed by using speaker adaptation, speaker interpolation, IEM voice, something like that. So ATS stands for? Yes, that's right. Uh, this figure shows the overview of HMA-based speech synthesis. The training part is the same in speech recognition, we collect speech database and uh, extract speech, the F0 and the Merkepsan, and compose the, train, compose the feature vector, and training context-dependent HMM. The difference between speech recognition and speech synthesis is the context-dependent labial format. In speech recognition, we are using the, a tri form or a queen form only the phonetic information. But in speech synthesis, it is not enough because we have to capture the prosodic lexical information. So in, in this rubber, this rubber includes, for example, part of speech, syllable information, utterance information. So this is the only difference between speech recognition and speech synthesis in the training part. In synthesis, we comp the input speech are com converted into the context-dependent label sequence, and we compose the context-dependent HMM according to the label sequence, and generate speech, generate Merkep's rank coefficient and F0. Uh, from F0, we can obtain uh, excitation, and by using speech synthesis filter, we can obtain speech waveform in this framework. So that's, I suppose you use the triple? Uh, in this case, we are using queen form and uh, 
several information, part of speech, phrase, and utterance information. Yeah, now, for the F0 instruction, you probably could do voice detection, so that you yeah, yeah. generation have different categories of uh, yeah. Uh, excitation. Yeah, for excitation, this information includes the voice and voice information and the F0 value. <coughs> So, so they're all done in different states, huh? Yeah, yeah. Uh, different stream. We are using a uh, multi stream. So first stream includes first stream includes mail cat SRAM and their delta and delta delta. The second stream includes F0 delta delta delta. And if they are they're they're unvoiced, what do you do? Mm -hmm. Where F0 is not defined. Yeah, yeah. If, if there is not defined, so it so we are noise, some noise as excitation, so they will need to see mm -hmm. this. Uh, we developed the March space uh, distribute March space uh, MSD HMM. It can model the different dimensional observation. So in unvoiced region, we ob we are observing the unvoiced the uh, zero dimensional. Uh, observation and uh, in voice region we are observing the three dimensional observation including F0, delta, delta, delta. So by using MSDHMM we can model F0 sequence without any assumption. Uh, first, uh, so I'd like to talk about uh, speech parameter generation from hidden Markov model. The concept is synthesizing speech, maximizing its output probability for a given HMM. For a given HMM lambda and the Gaussian component sequence Q, determine observation vector sequence O, which maximizes its output probability from Q. So in this case, the Argmark, taking the argmarks, we can obtain the Gaussian distribution. However, in this case, without any constraints, the maximum sequence becomes the mean vector sequence. It's a problem. So the, we are integrating dynamic features. So by using the constraints between O and C, we integrate this relationship. Then, for given HMM lambda and the Gaussian component sequence Q, determine of the Bayesian vector sequence O, which maximizes its output probability under the constraints O equal WC. It is equivalent to maximizing the output probability according with respect to C. So it's taking the Agmax by using this equation. <coughs> so by, se by setting the partial derivative according to C equal to zero, we obtain a set of linear equations to determine the maximum uh, C by using this equation. By solving this equation, we can obtain the maximum likelihood sequence. This figure shows the. So, do you find that mm -hmm. if you make the W to be such that you know it's not just mm -hmm. minus one plus one, if it's you know lower, mm -hmm. you get more smooth structure coming yeah, out? Yeah, we've never tried, but I, I tried once, and I found that if we increase the number of frames, window frames, the trajectory becomes more smooth. Yeah. But this is pretty good already. Some of the I cast paper the figures mm -hmm. I have seen they're very, very smooth already. Yeah, yeah, that's I right. Assume they just use plus one minus one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this will improve probably is minor. Yeah, I in my opinion, the HM base if we we are using plus minus one, but it is already very smooth. If we increase the number of frames, it becomes very, very smooth. So we are now we are facing the over smoothing problem. So we don't want to use. What about computation? If 
you expand mm -hmm. over plus one minus one, mm -hmm. I think your uh -huh. uh, combination matrix becomes less. No, no, no. Uh, this this matrix is the uh, no, not for the band band oh, matrix. Band if we are using plus minus one, uh -huh. uh, it become uh, five. Uh, yeah. If we increase the number of the window, uh, two times L, the L equal, if we assume L is equal to the, the window frame, the, this band becomes 2L plus 1. So if we increase the number of window frames, the computational uh, cost will increase. Yeah. So this figure shows the obtained maximum likelihood trajectory. The, this dotted line shows the mean vector, and this box shows the covariance mean. So if we don't use the, this W constraint, the maximum likelihood sequence becomes the stairway, stepwise statistics. But by introducing the relationship between static feature and the dynamic features, the maximum likelihood sequence becomes very smooth trajectory. So we can avoid the stepwise statistical problem in this framework. So the relationship between HMBS pitch synthesis and the trajectory HMM. The mean vector of trajectory HMM over line CQ is given by solving this equation. And the speech parameter vector sequence, which maximizes its adequate probability from Q, C max, it is used in HMBS speech synthesis, is given by this equation. So over line, the mean vector of trajectory HMM and the speech parameter trajectory used in the HMBS speech synthesis is the are completely the same. So HMA-based speech synthesis are using the mean vector of the trajectory HMA. So let's think about the, max, the training. When the output probability of trajectory HMA takes its maximum value, it's equal to the observation equal to the mean vector. So estimating trajectory HMM based on ML criterion is the nearly to me minimizing square error between the training data and the mean vector. So it is equal to minimizing square error between observation, vector, observation and the speech parameter trajectory between HMA-based uh, HMA speech synthesis stuff and uh, training data. So it estimating parameters maximizing the trajectory HMA probability may improve HMA-based speech synthesis. So then I'd like to talk about uh, how to estimate the trajectory HMA parameters. So we estimating trajectory agent parameters by EM algorithm. The auxiliary function is given by this equation. The hidden variable is Gaussian component sequence Q. However, the computing posterior probability is prohibitive because the uh, utterance covariance matrix PQ is full covariant. So it the entire Gaussian component sequence depend, depends. So it is NP, this problem is NP hard. So exact inference is intractable. So we are using approx approximate inference techniques such as variational EM sampling or Viterbi approximation. In this presentation, I'd like to talk about the Viterbi approximation. So by using the Viterbi approximation maximization problem broken 
the, down into the how to find the best Gaussian component sequence and how to find the optimum parameters. First, I'd like to talk about how to optimize the trajectory HM parameters. There, uh, there are artwork log, uh, likelihood of the, uh, log likelihood of the trajectory HM given by this equation, where RQ is W sigma W, and small RQ is W sigma mu. So, so that's C, is mm -hmm. the static parameter. Yeah, static feature vector sequence. So you don't have delta there anymore? Yeah, in this case, we don't have any okay. delta and delta, delta. So it's represented by W there? Yeah, that's right. So the mu Q and the sigma Q is depend on the Gaussian component sequence. So it includes the redundant, so example, this, so we introduce the Gaussian component sequence matrix, SQ, and uh, M and phi. M is a vector, includes all, ga all mean vectors without any redundant part. And phi includes the Gaussian co uh, covariance matrix of all Gaussian component without any redundant part. So by projecting M, and phi using the Gaussian component sequence matrix, we can obtain mu q and uh, diagonal elements of sigma q. So R q is a w sigma w, and our small r q is w sigma mu, but can be represented using the phi and m without any redundant part. So by, ta by taking the partial derivative with respect to m and setting equal to zero, we obtain a set of linear equations to obtain a maximum likelihood m. The dimensionality of this set of linear equation is very large. For example, we, are, we have one million Gaussian component and we are using the, for example, 12 dimensional MFCC. So this matrix is very, very large. So it is very difficult to solve this uh, linear equation. Uh, unfortunately, our group is not so rich. We don't have not enough, uh, we don't have not enough computational power. So currently we are using a monoform model. But what can you use travel model and then do sentence by sentence optimization? And then at the end you average. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we can use the uh, iterative, iterative, yeah, iterative method. Yeah, yeah, that's right. The n could be small. Yeah, that's it's right. Solvable. Yeah, so we are using the, the if the, we are using diagonal, so this problem can be solved for each <coughs> dimensionality. So, mm, but uh, first of all, we should use the direct method. And by taking the partial derivative with respect to phi, we obtain uh, this equation. But this is not linear problem, so it is unable to find optimal phi. So we are now we are using the steepest ascent or cache newton method to find the, the good uh, phi. Okay, next I would like to discuss how to find the Q maximum likelihood state Gaussian component sequence. So computing PQC lambda is intractable because interframe covariance matrix is full. So unable to apply the Chervi algorithm or DP to find the Q max. However, hey. Um, it seems like when you put the PQ up there, 
it was limited to bands near the diagonal. Mm -hmm. Could you not approximate that with yeah, a yeah. second or third order Markov chain and then do Viterbi? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll talk system? about yeah, yeah. I will talk about that. So we are using the Viterbi algorithm with derived decision. So it means the the it the the it approximate the this model with the some frame model by using the second or third order Markov model. Okay. In that case, that's really good. It's not mm -hmm. You actually get mm -hmm. the optimal state sequence by doing what you just said. Yeah. You know, just said. yeah. You know, so it's still an approximation it's because approximation. you're mm -hmm. cutting off the dependencies yeah, yeah, yeah. after a particular leg. No, but, no, but if it's a uh, tri diagonal, for instance, mm -hmm. the dependencies are already no. removed. Right? Yes. But uh, what should be still? We, in this case, we are. We eliminate the dependencies, but uh, for example, um, how can I say? Oh, yeah, okay. So, yeah. so you still have uh, dependency all the way? Yeah. Back, I see. We're, <laughs> we're, to find the good state sequence, we are using, we cut the dependencies, but mother still have the dependency. dependency. Okay, first, I'd like to talk about the time recursive computation of output probability. So the output probability can be computed in this form. So this probability, this time can be computed Easily. So it is equivalent to HMM stuff. So the problem is how to compute the normalization constant. The blue part, the sigma q is diagonal, so computing this stuff is very easy. However, pq is full, but its inverse matrix is structured. So, but the Computing PQ, determinant of PQ and LPR is difficult. <coughs> so RQ is the inverse of PQ. <coughs> it's band, symmetric, and positive defined matrix. So it can be factorized by Kolesky decomposition. So RQ can be factorized into the upper triangular matrix. So determinant of PQ is equivalent to this, and this, and this. So determinant of upper triangular matrix is the, the determinant of the diagonal elements. Okay. Uh, uh, let's think about the dependency of UQ. So this shows the example of upper triangle matrix. In this case, we are using plus minus one window. This is, uh, this term only depends on these terms. And this term depends on these terms. And this term depends on these terms. So, UTT only depends only on the Gaussian component sequence from one to T plus the L uh, in this case, t plus one. So, a p uh, determinant of p can be computed in a time recursive manner. So, so, that's, so that computation is based upon the assumption that mm -hmm. the delta term is t plus one minus t. Yeah. Plus yeah. One. If you use t plus two, t minus. Yeah. Two. Oh, so, in that. this case, so if we have the t plus. Okay. So the same yeah. thing will happen. Yeah. Yeah. Will so, to solve that problem, to solve the R, uh, okay, the, to solve that the linear equation, we are using the forward substitution and the backward substitution. So this this equation shows the forward substitution, and that shows the backward substitution. So R P R can be 
uh, modified into the GQ times GQ. This GQ is a vector used in the forward substitution. So this GQ depends on the U2, depends on, also depends on the former frames. So GQ can be computed in a time recursive manner. So RPR also can be computed in a time recursively. As a result, so this problem, ZQ can be can integrate in the, this term, and ZQ T plus L is a normalization constant at time T. So output probability of trajectory HM can be computed in a time recursive manner. By using that uh, that we can use the approximate behavior algorithm to find the more likely uh, Gaussian component sequence. In this case, we are using the delayed decision. This figure shows the two-frame delayed decision term. At this frame, we decide the which is for. In this case, we have the, these two paths. And we, at this frame, we determine which is more likely path. And at this time, we decide which is more likely. So we, are using, we, uh, we determine the state with two frame delayed decision. So it can incorporate the effect of determination for its neighboring frames. You know, the core articulation effects are considered from 100 millisecond for or 200 millisecond. So if we are setting the delay from 10 to 20 is sufficient for a 10 millisecond frame shift, well, I guess we can obtain the most likely uh, Gaussian component sequence by using this algorithm. So it's exponential number four mm -hmm. for two frame delay. Uh -huh. You have mm -hmm. in the left to right model. Yeah, we are using then left to right model. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, T square. Yeah. So in practice, you think of two half Yeah, it is. Uh, the computational cost is a computational cost increase, but now we are using the Vim search to prove the. And then I'd like to discuss about the relationship between the trajectory model and other techniques. The inverse covariance matrix RQ is given by this equation. So this can be represented by this form. They're adding the rank one matrices. So RQ is weighted sum of rank one symmetric matrix, but the rank is more rank is greater than its dimensionality. So this framework is ex uh, equivalent to extended maximum likelihood linear transformation uh, presented uh, developed by IBM Olsen. So in this case, we are modeling the the, we are modeling the inverse covariance matrix using the rank one symmetric matrix matrix. So I think it is interesting. We are in this model. We uh, extend the dimensionality and model the training data in that space. MLT is limited. MLLT is, yeah. Uh, MLLT and EMLLT are developed to model inter-frame correlation. Yeah, yeah. And MLLT is equal to the, this is, MLLT case, the W is square. And EMLLT case, it is, the W is 
not square, the dimensionality is increased. So yours is more powerful. Huh? No, uh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. that's right. EMLLT and MLLT to the model the interframe correlation, but in this case, we can model inter both interframe correlation and intraframe correlation. So, what you are IBM? Did you work with Peter Arson on this comparison? No. <laughs> I, I worked for speech synthesis. And uh, some people present the EMLLT can be viewed as product of Gaussian. And uh, Chris Williams pointed out that HMM with static and delta features can be viewed as a product of Gaussian. So trajectory HMM can be viewed as product of, also viewed as project product of Gaussian. So this is a product of Gaussian representation of the trajectory HMM. So ZQ is a normalization constant and there for each Gaussian component, the output probability from Gaussian component as time t are producted and then normalized. Then I checked the, equ the equation of uh, product of Gaussian and the equation is completely the same they derived in the trajectory HMM and the product of Gaussian. So in this point of view, the conventional HMM with static and dynamic features is product of Gaussian without any normalization. So I think it is a big problem. Well, so it should be normalized, but we, we, are, we don't normalize in the conventional framework. So we evaluated the trajectory HMM both in speech recognition and speech synthesis. Uh, this is a preliminary uh, evaluation, so we are using very small corpus. Uh, training data are 450 utterances, and test data are 53 utterances. The topology of models are three state left to right manifold model with single Gaussian state output distribution. This uh, figure shows the average log likelihood. Each line shows the delay to find the likely Gaussian component sequence. This is a delay is two, three, four, five, six, seven. So approximate behavior algorithm is with larger delay can find more likely Gaussian component sequence. And iterative training improved model likelihood. And it is converged. This figure shows the example of a trajectory real data. The, the plotted line is the first male capsule. Black line is the one of training data, and green line is the HMM mean sequence. So HMM cannot, ma cannot represent the, uh, cannot, uh, HMM has the problem the, that the, with constant statistics within the HMM state. For the test data, Mm -hmm. This is the training data. Yeah, this is the training data. Just to see test data. Uh -huh. Even further away from it. <laughs> yeah. And this blue line shows the mean trajectory uh, generated from hidden mark, uh, standard hidden mark model using the parameter generation algorithm used in the HMA based speech synthesis. So the Generator trajectory is very smooth and it can represent, a, it can vary in, within the HMM state. Yeah, I'm very surprised at why I heard your demo of mm -hmm. synthesis quality. Very good. Oh, did you? Did you listen? Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, I 
I don't think so. I presented that only in speech synthesis workshop. Yeah. I can't, you have the demo. No, 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 no. I don't, uh, last I cast. Oh, I see the three, one more. Oh, you uh, 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 I'm not sure of there. The, the point is that now you've got this kind of discrepancy here. There is uh -huh. a big discrepancy. Well, you get the peak here. Ah, that's right. Yeah, I will. How does that affect the synthesis uh, quality? Yeah, yeah. J just a moment. <laughs> there, the, this red line shows the mean trajectory from trajectory HMM. So, uh, please see this part. The blue line is, with, is without trajectory HM training, and the red line is trajectory with trajectory HM training. So, it becomes more closer to the training data. Yeah, that's right. Uh, bec I think uh, it is using the context independent model, so I think that is uh, one of the problems. So we evaluated, we conducted a speech recognition experiment using the 100 best three squaring with and without reference. The state boundary is resegmented by the approximate behavior algorithm. The same delay was used both in training and rescoring. And we found that uh, if we use the different delay in training and uh, Rescoring the performance degraded, so we should use the same delay both in training and uh, evaluation. So this figure shows the, res the result without reference. Baseline was nine. The error rate of baseline system was 19.7 percent. So in this case, we achieved about nine percent error reduction using the seven frame delay. Yes, and speaker dependent, and the context independent matter. Excuse me. Hi. I'm not familiar with your uh, test set. Uh huh. Can you give a give me an idea of how many phones there are in your test set? Uh, it is not so long, so about two or three seconds. So, and uh, the number of Test utterances are 53, so not so big. Uh, I'm not Maybe 300? Yeah, I, I think so. Uh, phone? Uh, number of phones uh, around uh, more than 1,000. Yeah. 1,000? Yes. It doesn't seem like mm -hmm. the number of iterations has much of a significant effect yeah, on your Yeah, in this case, that's right. Is there an explanation for that? Uh, because in uh -huh. the previous slide, uh -huh. your mean trajectory uh -huh. after trajectory training uh -huh. was looked much better. Yeah, okay. That's after conversion, I suppose. Uh, this. Uh -huh. That would be like iteration zero for the next slide. Yeah, this is a mean trajectory. The iteration zero, yeah. zero. It means the normal HMM, and this is only iteration one. Oh, that's iteration yeah, one. Yeah, iteration, okay. iteration one. Okay. So when you get the conversions, do get much better? I think so. Yeah. And this figure shows the result with reference hypothesis included. The base uh, baseline is also improved. I guess it is because of the beam search. So in this case, we achieved about 43% error reduction, error reduction in the, with the two-frame delay. I'm one, I, I can't understand why the small delay gets the better results. Uh, this is, I think the, if we are using bigger uh, test set, uh, the, I think the larger delay will show the better results. And also fluctuates a lot. Yeah. yeah. So, so what do you need to have reference capabilities included in this case? And there, you couldn't search 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, we are using rescoring. So we add the uh, reference into the 100 best list. Yeah, you don't need to do that. The reason why I cannot is because I, I couldn't search. Uh -huh. Ah, I see. It's just show that with the delay position, the yeah. search is okay. Yeah, okay. we are using the we are using reference with the reasoning. It is also re reasoning. So that's not very good result. It's probably skill 90% error. <laughs> it you, you said in the previous slide, you resegmation is very big. Uh, does you, I mean, did you use some ref, uh, I mean, some, I mean, transcription to do mm -hmm. the resegmation? Re Reestimation? I mean, do, do you need to use the, trans, uh, the result of mm -hmm. the I'm best list mm -hmm. to do ah, okay. Uh, I use the, okay, the trajectory HMM is estimated from hidden Markov. Or we, are, we initialize the trajectory HMM parameters using the normal hidden Markov model. And after, and we applied the training, trajectory HMM training to that model and estimate trajectory HMMs. We used the that initial model for baseline system. So, so base, we use the HTK vitality coda with that initial model to generate 100 best list. Then you, uh, I just wonder what's, what, what, what did you do in, in the approximate white way algorithm? Because mm -hmm. before it should be a training algorithm, right? Uh -huh. But here you just for decoding. Mm -hmm. so uh, okay. Difference. Okay. Uh, we have the transcription with state boundary, with phone and the state boundary. But this state boundary is obtained by the HMM, oh, not okay. for trajectory HMM. So the phone, the phone sequence is fixed, but state boundary is can be re can, can moved, can can move. So that's a big difference. So did you see what is the oracle errors for the 100 best hypothesis? Oh, pardon? The quality of the n best hypothesis. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, the the best, best. Sorry. So okay. This the, is the top one. If you take <coughs> all together. Mm -hmm. uh, now we found that the, the best one, best sequence of the 100 best risks were 10 percent error rates of the 100 best or 10 percent. Yeah, so the, there is still big okay. difference between the, this model and. And we also conducted a speech synthesis experiment using CME Arctic database speaker AWB. The first 1,000 1, utterances were used for training and remaining 42 utterances were for were used for testing. By using this training data, we constructed the HMM-based speech synthesis system. And after that, we trained uh, the trajectory HMM. We applied the trajectory HMM training to that model and constructed trajectory HMM version of the HMM-based speech synthesis. In this case, we don't we did not apply the trajectory HMM training for F0. Only spectrum part only spectrum parts are re-estimated. So prosodic information of the baseline model and the trajectory HMM model are completely the same. So test type is period comparison test, and the subjects were eight graduate students in our group. Test sentences or uh, 20 test sentences were chosen at random from 46 sentences. We, so tra in trajectory HMM, we are using the Viterbi approximation. So we thought that Viterbi approximation uh, affects the quality of the speed. So we trained the BAM version and the Viterbi version and the trajectory HMM. 
the, this figure shows the preference score. In this case, trajectory HMM achieved the significant progress compared with the BAM wage and the which have trained the hidden mark model. So it indicates that the trajectory HMM uh, can solve this inconsistency between training and the synthesis in HMA-based speech synthesis, so it improved the speech quality of the hidden mark model-based so speech. To, uh, HMA, not yes. Without normalization. Yes. No. Uh, their usual hidden mark model with EM and vitor training. And the trajectory HM is always better. Yes. Uh, we, now we are developing the EM type training algorithm, but in this case we use the beta B approximation. So in this presentation, I, do, I show the reformulating the hidden Markov model as a trajectory model and driving a beta B type training algorithm for the trajectory HMM. It was evaluated both in speech recognition and synthesis, and we achieved significant problem, <laughs> sorry, significant improvement of a hidden mark model, both in speech recognition and synthesis. And the future plans are designing and implementing a VTRV decoder for that model. So we have VTRV algorithm for that model. So I think we can implement the VTRV decoder for that model. Uh, fortunate, fortunately, uh, we, our group got, we, our group get the new researcher uh, who is developing the speech decoder for a long time. His name is uh, Akinobu Lee. He is developing Julius, uh, Japanese open source speech decoder. So, by using his help, I think I can implement the decoder for that model. And we, the, and we did only small evaluation, so we should, use, we should do large scale evaluation, for example, speaker independent, LVCSR. Now we are working, EM, we are working to develop EM type training, for example, variational or Monte Carlo, using the variational or Monte Carlo EM. Okay, thank you very much. Before we go to questions, if you want to meet the speaker, uh, let me know. And we have some additional slots. And we have our time for questions. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of a parametric way of doing trajectory by doing the mm -hmm. and, then, and, and it's a parametric way of doing a trajectory mm -hmm. that many people have been doing mm -hmm. using a polynomial. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Compare these two different ways. Yeah, we have never compared that model. So I think if we, if we, our group and Microsoft work together, we can compare the, our staff and your staff. Thank you.